The short answer is, well, no. Python still appears to be the king of data science for the foreseeable future. But don't think that there's nothing to see in the data science and machine learning nook of the Rust ecosystem. You don't necessarily need to know anything about data science or Rust in order to follow this video. We're gonna keep things pretty simple. The Rust ecosystem has all of the bare necessities to do data science. If you're looking for something bleeding edge, you might have to stick with Python. But Rust has implementations for most of the classic algorithms that you might need. Of course, by data science, I'm talking about gleaning actionable insights from data either for the purpose of making business decisions or for making predictions based on future data, which is called machine learning. In Python, the go-to library for many classic algorithms is called scikit-learn. In the Rust world, there's a crate called Linfa that is self-described as being kin in spirit to Python's scikit-learn. We're going to write a small Rust program that uses the Linfa implementation of an algorithm called decision trees to tell us what makes us truly happy in life. I'm not actually kidding. But first, I wanted to let you know about another Rust-focused YouTube channel that I've found extremely valuable during my Rust journey. It's called No Boilerplate, and it focuses on fast technical videos. One example of what makes No Boilerplate so great is a video called Build Your Rust Lightsaber, which, in addition to a very clever science fiction analogy, contains a treasure trove of recommendations for setting up an effective and enjoyable Rust development environment. No Boilerplate is true to its name. There aren't any flashy animations or sound effects, just high quality videos that are incredibly dense with valuable information. If you're interested in Rust, definitely check them out. I'll have a link to the channel in the description below. Now let's talk about what we're going to accomplish in this video. We have this data about the things we did on a given day, as well as how happy we felt on that day. Each row in this table represents a single day. We should be able to build a decision tree in our Rust application that will, based on this data, automatically surface the set of decisions that have the biggest impact on our daily happiness. This is going to be extremely simple. Not including the data itself, we're going to try to keep things under 20 lines of code. First, we're gonna create the project. So we'll do cargo new lympha test. Uh, CD into the directory, and then we'll add a few crates that we'll need. Uh, the first is Linfa, which is a library that we're going to be using. The second crate that we're going to use is called Linfa Trees. Linfa actually separates all of its various algorithms into different subcrates, and since we're using the decision tree algorithm, that's in Linfa Trees. So we'll do cargo add Linfa Trees. The third crate that we're going to add is called ND Array. So ND Array is actually a Rust equivalent of a Python library called NumPy. And NumPy and ND Array both allow you to create arrays and then do arithmetic on those arrays, which is critical for machine learning because training and inference in machine learning often involves doing various arithmetic operations on arrays, like multiplying and adding them. In both Python and Rust, if you just create an array, you can't really do a whole lot with that array in terms of arithmetic. You can't add that array to another array using the plus operator. You'd have to jump through some extra hoops to be able to do that. ND array and NumPy make arithmetic operations on arrays super easy to do. So that's why a lot of machine learning libraries in both the Python and Rust ecosystems support those data structures as input. Now that we have all our crates added, we'll open the project in VS Code. First, we're going to set up our data. And our data is going to be put into an ND array array2 structure. So Array2 is an ND array data structure, and it's going to be an array of 32-bit floats. Linfa and a lot of other machine learning libraries deal with floating point numbers as opposed to integers. And then we're going to use the array macro to actually construct the array. So we use the array macro, and then each line here can be a one data point. So this is going to be a two-dimensional array, so each line will be a, a one-dimensional array. Each line will represent one row in that table that we looked at, and so this row will represent one day, and we're going to have columns for each of the things that we think contribute to happiness, and then at the end, the last element of the array is going to be our happiness for that day. If the thing that we think is contributing to our happiness is like a binary decision, a yes or no, we're going to represent yes with one or zero for no. In this case, let's go ahead and import the array2 struct. We're also going to import the linfa prelude and the nd array prelude. Now that we have the preludes populated, we can start populating our array two. Each row in this two dimensional array represents one day of data. And so the first few elements will be features about that day that we think have an effect on our happiness. And then the last element of that array is our happiness on that particular day. So in this case, the first field is uh, whether we watch TV or not. And that's represented by a one or a zero, one being yes, zero being no. So we'll put a one here for our first data point. Uh, and then these are common delimited. The second column is whether we pet a cat. So if we pet a cat, we're going to put one. The third feature is going to be the number of lines of Rust code that we wrote on that day. On this particular day, we wrote a thousand lines of Rust code. We'll do 1000. 
And then the last feature is whether we ate pizza on that day. So one is yes, zero is no. On this day, we'll do one. The last element in this array is on a scale of one to 10, how happy were we on this given day? And on this day, we were a 10 out of 10, so 10. That's an example of one data point in this two-dimensional array. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste the rest of the data in. So that's our data, we have a few data points here. Now the other thing we have to do before we start training our model is we have to come up, or we have to make a vector of feature names so that we know how to display the decision tree at the end. For that, it's actually gonna be a traditional Rust vector. So we'll do let feature names, let me scroll up a little bit, let feature, and again, the first column or first feature is gonna be watched TV. Second is gonna be pet cat. The third is uh, rust lines of code. And the fourth is a pizza. When we want Linfa to create a model based on this data, first we actually need to split up the features or the things that we might impact the thing that we're trying to predict, in this case happiness. We need to split that apart from the thing that we're trying to predict. So we actually need to wind up with a separate array for the features and then another array for happiness. ND array has some helper functions that make doing that really easy. We need to compute the number of features we have. We could hard code that, but we could also compute it based on the size of the second axis of that two dimensional array. And to get the size of that second axis, all we need to do is call len of and then pass in an axis. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so that'll give us the number of features. And then we need to create that separate array for just the features. So we'll do ND array arrays have a slice method that allow you to get a subset of that array by passing in the dimensions that you want. So in this case, we're gonna use a, the S macro, and then we're gonna say we want all the rows, and we want all the columns except for the last one. So we're gonna pass in a range for that. That looks like zero to num features. So this will give us the entire two-dimensional array minus this last column here, which is the rightmost column, which is our happiness rating for that day. And that returns a reference to an array. We actually want to own that array, so we're going to do two owned. And then we need to get the remainder of the array, just the happiness column. So pretty similar. In machine learning, the thing that we're trying to predict is often called a label. So we'll do let labels... And then ND array has a helper method called column that is kind of like slice, but it assumes that you only want one column, which makes it even more concise. So, and then we do num features. We also want to maintain ownership of this array as well. Now that we have our separate features and labels arrays, we need to build what's called a Linfa dataset from those arrays. Linfa has a dataset new function that we're going to use to create that dataset. So we've called dataset new and we pass in our features and labels. But there's also two other things that we need to decorate our dataset with. The first is targets. And targets is kind of another name for labels. We currently have a label that's a score of one to 10. One being sad, 10 being as happy as you can possibly be. We wanna bucket those into some less granular values like sad, okay, and happy. That allows our model to generalize a little bit more and it'll make our decision tree a little bit simpler. So we're gonna use a function called map targets to map a set of those happiness values to a string. We're gonna convert each label to an I32 so that we can use a match clause and use ranges in that match clause. Anything from the minimum value of an I32 to four we'll consider to be sad. And then everything from five to seven we'll consider to be okay. And eight to anything above that we'll consider to be happy. The other thing we need to decorate the data set with is those feature names that we created earlier. So we'll do dot with feature names. That should do it for creating our data set. Now we'll pull in the decision tree algorithm, fit it on our data, which should produce a model that we can then visualize. So let model 
Split quality is something that I'm not gonna go into too much on this video. You can think of that as kind of a tuning knob to get the decision tree to be built how you exactly how you want it to be built. And there's different kind of algorithms for doing that. This value for split quality is a good first start. So you can try that for starters. And then if it's giving you something that you don't really like, you can kind of dive into different types of split qualities and different hyperparameters of decision trees and kind of tune it to your liking. But for now, we'll start with this. And then we're gonna call dot fit pass it a borrowed reference to our data set and that's going to return a result we can call unwrap because we're not in production right now if this fails we can just have the entire program fail that's fine we'll go ahead and import the decision tree and split quality constructs at this point we have our model and there's a few things you can do with it at this point. We can create inferences from it. So we can take new data that doesn't have happiness associated with it. So we might have a new day's worth of data. We can say we ate pizza, we pet a cat, we wrote no Rust code and we didn't watch TV. And it should be able to predict based on that model how happy we were on that given day. That's one thing we can do with it. The other thing we can do with it, which is what we're going to do now, is export the model and visualize it. So we can export it into a LaTeX file File, which we then can then convert to PDF and then we can open it and look at the decision tree and figure out what happened. Decision trees are nice in that you can actually visualize the model. That's not true for a lot of other machine learning algorithms like neural networks. If you try to visualize a neural network, you'll see all the values, all the weights for all the connections, but it's really hard to, for a human to glean insights from that. That's one of the really nice benefits of decision trees. So let's go ahead and create a file, a LaTeX file. If you're not familiar with LaTeX, it's actually a markup language for creating visualizations for things. It's used a lot in academia, but it can also be used to generate diagrams. And LaTeX is a format that Linfa trees can be exported to. So we'll do file create, we'll call it dt.tech. Uh, that returns a result, so we'll unwrap that. Uh, and then write to the file, um, model that export to tykz. And then we'll do with legend, which is gonna give us a guide to what the various symbols on the tree mean. And then that also returns a result. So we'll do dot unwrap. And we'll go ahead and import file here. We should be good to go at this point. Just to recap, we set up our data, put it in a ND array, two dimensional array. We created a vector of feature names that are gonna help with our visualization. We split the ND array into two arrays, one for features and one for labels, which contains our happiness. We created a data set from those two arrays and we mapped each label from an integer to a string and we put them in buckets, sad, okay, and happy. And then we built a model from that data set using the decision tree and specified some hyperparameters. Finally, once we have that model, we are exporting it to a LaTeX file. And then after we export this, we're actually gonna convert it to PDF and then take a look at it and see what it looks like. So we'll go ahead and run this. That looks like it worked. Now we're gonna see if that file got generated. Looks like it did. So we have this LaTeX file but how do we open it? We can convert it to a PDF using an executable called PDF LaTeX, and that's provided by a homebrew package called MacTech. If you're not on a Mac, uh, the steps for doing this are a little bit different, but it's probably not that hard, regardless of what platform you're on. On a Mac, you can just do brew install MacTech. I already have it installed. Now that we have MacTech installed, we can convert the tech file to a PDF using PDF LaTeX uh, dt.tech and then open it in, I think it'll open in preview. This is our decision tree. Okay, we can see a legend in the upper right. Uh, val three is whether we ate pizza or not. And val two is the number of lines of Rust code that we wrote. So we can see the root node here. If val three, which is whether we ate pizza, is if that's a yes, then we go left. If we it's a no, then we go right. No, it's not less than 0.5. That means we go right. So if we ate pizza, we, we take the no branch. And then we have this other node. If the number of lines of Rust code that we wrote that day is less than 25, 
five, we'd go left for the Y branch. So if we ate pizza and wrote less than 25 lines of Rust code, we're just gonna be okay. If we ate pizza and we wrote more than 25 lines of Rust code, we're gonna be happy. So that's the, the kind of the right side, right subtree of this decision tree. On the other hand, if we didn't eat pizza, it looks like on this left subtree, as long as we wrote more than 275 lines of Rust code, we're gonna be happy. Otherwise, we're gonna be sad. So if we don't eat pizza and we don't write a lot of Rust, we're gonna be sad. Pretty straightforward. And decision trees are cool. You can throw whatever data you want with whatever cardinality you want. So as many features as you want, you can record all kinds of different things, whether you went for a walk, whether you went for a swim, and you can throw all this data at it, even things that don't really have an impact on your happiness necessarily. And the decision tree algorithm will zero in on the things that seem to be correlated with your happiness the most. And the nice thing about decision trees is it also catches interactions between features. So if it's the case that you are happy when you eat pizza, but only if you didn't write Rust code and vice versa, the algorithm should pick up on that and that will be reflected in the decision tree. I think that's actually really cool. It's one of the things that other machine learning algorithms tend to let slip through the cracks. That's a quick taste of the Rust data science ecosystem and an elevator pitch introduction to machine learning all packaged up together. What we covered in this video is pretty accessible even if you don't have a whole lot of Rust experience. But there was one point where I mentioned a read-only reference. To learn more about what makes Rust really unique, check out this video called Rust Demystified, where I walk through borrow checking, read-only references, and more. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.